What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? It is your host with the most, Avery LR32, here and destroy the ever living cash Tira Boo Boo Stain off of that subscribe button. So we can climb even further beyond the 11. Hundred ladder. I really appreciate all the support. Uh, I want to do a deck profile, a little uh, local report today um, because I'm exhausted and I just want to get this recorded and get it on out the door. Um, but basically, I went to locals today. I really wanted to play test Cash Tira. I wanted to talk about what I noticed throughout my play testing matches today um, and just try to kind of figure out where it is I want to take the deck and also, you know, what you guys have to think about it and also if it can help someone in the Yu-Gi-Oh! community figure out how they want to build their cash tira, well then all the more better. So uh, the first two rounds were just Johnny No Thumb wins. I mean, it was just that they, they, they were easy. It was 2-0. Round three, huh, we lost to Trap Tricks. The deck is still not fucking good. It's garbage. Uh, we bricked game one, so that already disqualifies the deck. Uh, and then game two, I think like he just broke my board from what I remember. Like he just, he side decked to go second and just broke our board. So it was just like, it's whatever. Like, <laughs> I don't really care. I was talking with one of my buddies at Locals and uh, he was like, what, what do you think about Trap Tricks? I'm like, the deck is hot garbage. If someone top eights a regional or a YCS with Trap Tricks, I will literally pay that person $1,000. I will go and make an OnlyFans and sell my fat ass Twix toes to get $1,000 to pay that person because there ain't no fucking way that Trap Tricks is gonna be top eighting any regional or YCS. You can top locals all day. You ain't topping no YCS or regional, especially if I'm playing in with Cash Tira and I don't brick. <laughs> uh, round four, we played against uh, our buddy William, who I think unsubbed to the channel, which is why I'm now at 1,120 subs and not 1,121. Because he said if I beat him, he's going to unsub. <laughs> so, uh, William, shout out to you, bro. Uh, good luck with, with your new job down south. Uh, and like I think he said West Palm Beach in Florida. Really awesome guy. Uh, we ended up 2 0 Brandon. Really great match. Really great playtesting. And then round five, I lost to the Cash Tira Mirror. I think I played game one kind of wrong. Um, I think I could have played it a little bit better. But it is what it is. Big turnout. Good competitive players overall besides those first two rounds. You know, they're, those those guys were still learning the game, which is totally fine. Everyone's got to start somewhere. Um, I just don't count it in my playtesting. You know, if you're beating, you know, for lack of a better term, scrubs all day, you're not necessarily getting better as a player. So, anyway, let's go ahead and jump on into it. We're just going to kind of blow through the obvious stuff here. We're still playing three Unicorn because it's fucking good. We're playing three Fenrir because it's fucking amazing. Uh, and then we're playing only two copies of Rise Heart. I want to bump this to three so bad, but with the Adventure Package, you can't really afford to play three of these because it can potentially brick. Um, the... Cash Tira players that I saw at Locals today, the one that I lost to in the mirror match is just, well, he was only on Nightmare Corruptor Ibley. He wasn't on the Brave package. The other guy I talked to uh, was also just playing the Ibley package, um, you know, with the Link Rebos and all that in the extra deck. He wasn't even playing the Brave package. And I can't understand why people don't want to play the Brave package because it can brick. Um, that is sort of the risk you take with it. However, it's such a fantastic fucking out to Nibiru. You know, uh, one of the players I talked to today was like, you know, well, if they have it, they have it. At the same time, it's one of those cards that if they have it, you lose. So I would rather just be playing the outs to the best of my ability, even if I end up swapping to just, you know, an Ibley lock. So, um, and then for the one of us, we're playing one Ogre. It's amazing. One uh, Tier Element Cash Tira, and then one Scareclaw Cash Tira, which is the super rare that uh, the round two guy traded with me with uh, the common that I had. So I appreciate him hooking me up with the super. Also, little fun fact with this monster lineup here. So <laughs> against the Trap Trick guy, fucking game two, he contact sees me. And I'm just like, who the fuck is playing contact C in 2023? It's not even fucking good against Cash Tira because I can just tribute summon the thing. So contact C says that you could special summon it to the opponent field whenever they special summon and the opponent can't fusion synchro exceeds or link summon unless you use the contact c as a material so i'm sitting with a fenrir and the contact c on my board and i surge a unicorn off a of fenrir and i'm like well fuck this i'm just going to tribute summon so it did hurt because i wasn't able to normal summon the ibli and then go into a lingaribo and lock him out of being able to like special summon uh which would have just hurt his contact c line um but i couldn't go that route first because um, I would have had a monster in my field and I wouldn't have been able to special summon the Fenrir. So 
that is some food for thought there. It was really fucking degenerate. And the fact that I banished my Dark Charmer off of my Prosperity the right before I dropped out Fenrir. And then he contact sees me. And I'm like, I literally have no out to the contact see. It was really toxic. I mean, this is local. So, like, you got to play test. You got to be ready for anything. But, like, if you're going to a regional, no one's fucking playing Max. Or Max C. What the fuck am I saying? No one's playing Contact C at, like, a regional or YCS. Unless, like, suddenly it makes a comeback. But, no, nah, Contact C is, is not good in my home opinion um the player was very good who beat me with traffic he was very good contact c i feel is just not a very good card and then uh like i mentioned uh the brave package we're playing two water enchanters with the one griffin rider for the monsters uh we are playing two copies of lava golem and then rounding off the monsters we're playing three copies of ash you have got to play lava golem this card is fucking disgusting ladies and gentlemen if you're not playing Lava Golem, Sphere Modes, I wouldn't even really suggest Kaijus, but like, Kaijus, I guess, like, if you can manage it, because, like, Ash is pretty cool, too, like, it, it's, it's Ash, um, but Lava Golem was a fucking MVP, like, uh, when we went against Brandon in round four, he had the Rinbrum, the, uh, Grand Gogognol, and he had, like, some other fusion on the table. And I was just like, oh, he had Drago Scapellia. So I was just like, all right, well, I'm just going to go and lava golem the shit out of your board. And, like, this card is such an amazing board breaker. We side deck a third, and it, it's, it's it's just fantastic. I understand why some people main deck three copies of lava because it's just so gross. Like, you lose your normal sum, but you don't give a fuck. Because if you have full combo, you're usually not going to need the birth unless you're kind of in a bad spot. But, I mean... Like, that's the risk you take. Like, you've got to play Lava Golem. If you're not playing Lava Golem, I don't know what you're doing, man. Lava Golem is just gross. And then, for the spells, we are playing three Pressure Planet, two of which are misprints. I already mentioned this in the previous profile, but one is, uh, two of them are double stamped. One's way more double stamped than the other. And then one is just a regular stamping. This, this card's amazing. There's a reason why this card's like 50 to $55. I literally told my round two opponent, please don't like just shuffle my deck. Please cut my deck because my deck's expensive. Then once he saw us playing Cash Tiro, I'm like, yeah, this deck's over a thousand dollars. He's like, bro, that's just ridiculous. I'm like, yeah, uh, it's it's expensive and then we're also playing three copies of this $55 card <laughs> so this card is just sick Th this card is just so good like that there's no explanation needed like <laughs> this this encompasses 2023 Yu-Gi-Oh like this is fucking expensive this is expensive like th this is like $300 right here like it's oh talk, talk about making your eyes bleed uh, not to mention we're also playing prosperity which is close to $50 now uh, fun fact, so, yeah, like, we're up to, like, what now, $400, not including the monsters, like, you gotta play Prosperity, though, like, you can't play Extrav, because, like, you, you don't want to be hitting your Shangri-Las and shit, um, I've seen some people online talking about, I'm just gonna play Extravs instead, and I'm like, please don't, like, you're gonna be so mad, just, you, if you're gonna play Cash Tira, like, you're already committing full stop to the fact that you are, like, cutting off your arms and legs to buy this deck, or to buy the cards that you need, so you might as well just go full cap all the way and just get the prosperities. Um, and then we're playing two copies of Book of Eclipse. This didn't really ever come up. I think this came up like once, and I hit like an Arise Heart, or like I hit a couple monsters. Like I, I think I played against it. I think I used it against the uh, the branded deck, but that was really it. it. It really didn't come up all that often. It's good. Don't get me wrong. It just it never really came up. Um, two birth. Uh, I don't want to move it up to three. I don't want to brick on it. Um, yeah, it's, it's good. If I, if I could, you know, have a fucking Millennium Eye and know what I'm going to hit off my Prosperity, I wouldn't have searched Rise Heart off of Fenrir. I would have just, you know, searched Unicorn, grab Birth, Normal Summon, and just went off to the races. Uh, that was in the R Cash Tira Mirror match. Like I said, I played that game one a bit wrong. Uh, we're playing two copies of Rite of Aramiser because we don't want to really brick on the Brave Engine. Uh, and then one Draco back, one Faithful Adventure because, you know, it's good. And then this is what we cut the shifters for. If you remember me talking about it in my discussion video on, on uh, why Cash Tears is one of my favorite decks, I talked about how I cut Dimension Shifter for Forbidden Lance. Lance is just fucking gross. So it's it's multi-purpose for one, right? But then also the fact that like you can use this thing in damage step to just fuck over an attack. Like I, against uh, our homie William, uh, round four when he was playing uh, Brandon, he had the Despian Proskinian on the field. And I'm sitting with an Arise Heart in defense, and he goes battle phase, 
and I was tempted to activate the Lance to target his uh, Proskinian, just so that I could have a third material on a Rise Heart and then detach three to banish his Fusion face down and then use Shangri-La and Diabolsis to lock out two more zones. But I was like, nah, fuck it, let's just see what he does. So then he goes uh, Proskinian attack into the Arise Heart, and I go damage step Lance, drop your monster by 800, it's down to 24, you lose 600 life points. And we were like a minute and a half away from time, and I didn't even realize, because I was trying to activate all my chains and resolve them properly. So I ended up winning by 600 life points in game two, which it didn't matter because I had already won game one. So even if we tied, I would have won the match. But besides the point, this helps you with Lancia. Uh, this helps you with Book of Eclipse. No, uh, I'm sorry. It does not help you with Book of Eclipse because Book of Eclipse targets the field. Same with Evenly Match. Um, but it helps you with like Imperm. It helps you with uh, Raigeki, actually, because that does attempt to destroy all monsters. Um, like Lance is just so, so good. I don't feel that Shifter is necessary because when you think about all the decks in the format, there's not really any deck that gives a shit about Shifter right now. Like, you've, we're seeing some sprite decks, like side deck or even main deck D Shifter. Tier Element does care about Shifter, but like Tier Element's dog shit now. Like, no one's playing that deck. Trap Tricks, I don't really feel like you have to be playing Shifter just to beat that deck when you can just sit on an Arise Heart and you're good. Um, and then, like, Labyrinth doesn't give a fuck about Shifter. They just usually side deck it. So, like, you, you have all these decks that just don't care about Shifter in the current meta that it seems kind of pointless to play. Um, Branded doesn't care about Shifter. They can just fuse in their Banish Zone. So I, I just feel that Lance is just so necessary. There was never a time where I opened this up and was like, God, I wish it was a Shifter. We're playing one Terraforming because I think it's going to be banned one day. Um, and then we're playing one Big Bang and then one Preparation because we're playing Ogre. Um, yeah, that's that's pretty standard for Cash Tira, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls of the Yu-Gi-Oh! gaming community. So for the extra deck, uh, we're playing two copies of, uh, it's actually pronounced Shangri-Era, not Shangri-La, but yeah, Shangri-Era card's busted. One deal, Bolsus. I want to play two so bad, and I understand why you don't need to, but it's like, son of a bitch, I want to play two so bad, it's just so good. Um, you only need one, though, really, just because of the fact that like, if you're going first, you're just going to use the one. You're never going to make a second copy. And, like, if the opponent's an idiot and they hit your Diabolsis, like, if it's, let's say it's a cash or mirror match and they're an idiot, they're going first and they hit your Diabolsis, it's like, okay, thank you. I wasn't going to make the fucker in the first place. Because you're either going to go Dracosac to pop their shit or you're going to go Big Eye to take their shit. So, like, hitting, like, please. I, 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 I hope and pray every night when I go to bed that these dumbass cash tier players are going to hit my Diabolsis. Like, I'll, I will be so happy if I go to the region in March and just cash tier players are hitting my deal balls this all day. It's going to be fantastic. Uh, we are playing two copies of Arise Heart. Um, this is the one that has like a double stamp name. I don't know if you can really see that on this dog water camera. But yeah, two Arise Heart. Arise Heart's disgusting. Uh, one Big Eye because it's good. One Dracosac because with the adventure package you can uh, bring out the two tokens, make a cheer of beanie, dump a water enchantress, and you have adventure plays. And even though they tan technically Nibiru you because you're at over five summons at that point, doesn't make any sense to Nibiru you because you've not committed anything to your board. Uh, two Zeus because it's good. Uh, two Lingaribos because we're playing the uh, Ibli package in the side. One Chirbini again for the uh, Brave package plays. One Dark Charmer because it's good. Uh, and Elf got banned. One Donner because it's a good link too. And then the Goliath for the Pot of Prosperity. You can banish it. And then if a Rise Heart's on the board, you, you attach the Goliath. Then because a Rise Heart is a machine, uh, it can't be destroyed by Barrow or by Card Effects because Goliath is an Xyz material. Uh, finally, for the side deck. We're playing three copies of Nightmare Corruptor Ibli. This card is very fucking good. Um, if you are a Cash Tira player and you are not playing Ibli either in your main or your side, you're doing it wrong, Sugar Boo Bear. Because this card is so goddamn good. Oh, this card is so good. It, it makes me and the Ultra Ball hard. Which, according to our buddy William, I bring that up every video. Which, I don't. I bring it up in some videos, but... We'll bring it up in this video just for him. Third Lava Golem because it's good. Third Book of Eclipse because it's good. Um, only two copies of Lightning Storm. I swapped these out from Dark Rulers because I just don't feel like Dark Ruler is going to get the job done. I'd rather have, you know, back row hate for a Labyrinth especially and Trap Tricks, I guess, now by extension um, with Lightning Storm. Labyrinth is such a hard matchup for uh, this deck. So being able to have the Lightning Storms to be able to pop their back row or make them activate them sooner than they want to is just so good. Uh, and then for the trap portion, we're playing 
Three evenly matched because you gotta play evenly. Uh, three judgment because I want to be able to go first and not have my board instantly shit on. And then for time, I'm playing the uh, Napalm Dragonius Raid Raptor and then the Arsenal Falcon. Um, if you don't know this combo, basically Arsenal Falcon requires two level, excuse me, two level sevens, detach material to summon a wing beast. So you can summon out Napalm Dragonius. Napalm Dragonius you can use this effect to inflict 600 points of damage or burn damage to the opponent. So as long as you open up two level sevens or a way to get two level sevens out on the board, you can just make Arsenal Falcon and go into Dragonius and just win the ball game in time. So guys, that is my cash tier deck from Locals. Overall, I think the deck performed well. I think I could have, as a player, played a little bit better, um, but I do like overall how it turned out. So let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.